Hello, and welcome to another episode of Spiritual Discussions. And today's topic, we'll be talking about depression. So you might be asking me, Sylvan, why the topic of depression? Why can't we just stick to the topic of happiness and fulfillment and just push the topic of depression under the rug and pretend it's something we don't need to deal with? And while yes, I could, but pushing anything under the rug is probably not the best approach to dealing with depression. Any housekeeping of the soul that is ignored is going to build up over time. I know many people hope that bad things in life just go away, but many times they don't. So we could just talk about happy things all the time, but if there's something that is truly burdening you, something that is burdening your ability to enjoy life, then we should talk about it. We should face the troubles in your life rather than letting your troubles take a hold of you. Now, a person probably won't be able to get rid of everything or resolve everything that is burdening them, but a person can learn how to deal with their troubles better. Now, as the topic of depression is often considered a medical issue, my disclaimer is that I am not a doctor. You should do what your doctor tells you to do before you listen to me. But I've had the opportunity to research this topic at different times and talk to even some professionals about this topic. And so today, I hope that I can share some nuggets that can help you navigate through the troubles that come your way so that you can make the most of the life God has given you. Before we get into how to deal with depression, first, we need to recognize that there's all different kinds of depression. Or better yet, there is a range of depression levels. There is a simple or light depression of feeling burdened with a lot of work to do in one day. The depression of having to begin a new work week or dealing with a lot of bills to pay. But there's also the other extreme, the extreme of being so burdened that a person is just stuck, stuck physically, emotionally, mentally, and yes, spiritually. They're so stuck and lost that they don't know what to do. I've talked to a pastor who was a certified counselor, and he said that a good measuring point or illustration to determine if someone is depressed enough where they needed to take medication is if they just can't reach the light switch. So if you can regularly get out of bed and go on your way with your day, then you shouldn't need medication to continue. But if you are stuck and you don't want to get out of bed or you know you have something to do but you just don't want to leave home to do it, then you probably need some medical treatment. So if you can reach the light switch of the room, then you probably don't need medical help or a prescription. This topic is rather close to my heart in that I've had friends and family deal with depression on a medical level. But my guess is that most who are listening to this podcast aren't needing medical treatment. So just learning how to better deal with the troubles of the world would be enough. So let's start there. What are the things that bring you down? I've mentioned bills, having to deal with all the responsibility in life, 
Maybe it's whatever's going on at work. It could be life at home and the issues there. Or it could be just a person is lacking a sense of purpose. Now these things are often able to be changed by just having a different kind of focus. Sure, it's probably best not to get rid of or run away from your family, but a person can learn how to manage bills or learn how to have better spending habits and better bill paying habits. A person can learn what is most important to deal with at work and let go of the responsibilities that aren't that important. As for myself, I've learned in my personality test that my personality recognizes very quickly the burden of details. The burden of all the things that I need to do and even the things the other people around me ought to do. I can guess very well how different decisions will have different outcomes. And all this thinking about all these possibilities becomes quite burdensome quickly. Some might know my personality type as perfect melancholy. And just being sad is in the name of my personality type. How would this make you feel if you learned this was you? But it's interesting, though, that many people find my personality to be overall happy. But that's not too surprising in that many comedians are also from the perfect melancholy group. They're able to look at all the details in life and find irony in it all. But getting back to my point, once I'm having to deal with the responsibility of work and making decisions, people can see that it's not too difficult for me to become stressed out. And so what do I do with this burden? What would you do with this burden? Now I could just look at all these details and be burdened by them all and just decide to do nothing. Or I can acknowledge the fact that, yes, there is a lot of details involved in being responsible. A lot of details in thinking through things figuring out where to go in the future, the uncertain future. But in the midst of all these details, I can recognize that it's going to be okay. Everyone else has issues as well. And while I hope that everything comes out perfect, it's okay if it doesn't. This understanding might be more artificial for me rather than genuine to my heart, but with everything going on, I get to not only try to figure out life on my own, I also get to figure out life with others who are also doing the same thing. Just trying to make the most of it all. If I find that what I'm doing is troubling others, then I get to learn what am I doing that is troubling them and even ask them, what I can do differently so that I won't trouble them anymore. And if someone is troubling me, then I could just tell the person that in a kind manner that the things that they are doing are bothering me. That I hope we can work something out and even come to a better understanding in the end. And even in the end, someone will receive or offer forgiveness where a pardon for doing wrong is needed. I hope that whatever is troubling you, you can resolve the issues sooner than later. As there can come a time when it will be too late to resolve the issue. For there are some issues that can cause depression that are often difficult to heal. Some of them can be relationship issues. For example, how a person was raised as a child. 
if a child struggled with being able to trust their family or didn't receive much care or love as a child, then that's going to be an issue that this person will have to deal with for the rest of his or her life. Sometimes relationship issues in life force you to go in a direction you may not want to have gone. But even events in a person's life can also do something similar. I'm sure that the people in a California town that have had their home burned down because of a fire, that they've had a force to move to a new town and rebuild their homes, I'm sure these people have things in their home that they wish they still had, but they don't anymore. And so then the people are forced to make a choice. They can be bitter about this unfortunate circumstance. Or they can recognize that, yes, this is unfortunate that this thing has happened in their life. But they are still given another day to live. Another chance to make most of the life that has been given to them. For there's nothing they can do to bring back the things they wish they had. A Christian phase for dealing with this kind of choice is to let go and to let God. To let go of whatever is troubling you and to let God, the creator of the world who deals with bringing justice to those who do wrong, to let him handle it. To let go and let God. And this approach has brought peace to many people. It calms their anxiety. And I'd hope it brings peace to you. For this approach gives us, gives all people, the opportunity to let God's creatures live and work in a way that God has created us to live. And let God deal with solving all the problems of the world. With this, here are some verses I leave for you today. Isaiah 41, verse 10. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. And I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous hand. My perfect hand. 1 Peter 5, 6-7. Humble yourselves, therefore, unto the mighty hand of God, so that at the proper time he may exalt you, casting all your anxieties on him, because he cares for you. Matthew eleven twenty eight through 30 Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, but you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths. Philippians 4, 6 through 7. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Let go and let God. May God's blessings be upon you. Until next time, have a good day. Mm-hmm.